Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Flight Sim Hub and welcome to the first video of a three part series on how to fly with another person in the same aircraft on Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020. Now back in the days of FS10, you could do this natively in the simulator and presently there isn't a way to do this by default. So this is a video explaining the add-on your controls. Now to be informed, a developer has confirmed on the Microsoft Flight Sim subreddit that this may be coming in future and is under development, but at the moment, your controls is going to give you the best experience for flying with another person. As we said, this video is the first one of a three part series. In this video, we'll detail the basics of getting it set up and get you into the air using a default aircraft. The next one will detail how best to use software on VATSIM and then finally how to use the software with a PMDG simulations aircraft. Quick spoiler, the PMDG does have some challenges to overcome. If you do find the following information useful, please be sure to give the video a like and subscribe so you don't miss the next one in the series. Now onto your controls. To download your controls then, we can head over to their website, the link will be in the video description. And if you can, spare just a little bit of money, be sure to donate to the developers via their PayPal link. The software is totally free and you can imagine the amount of work they've had to put into this to give us this flying experience. The other place you can grab this software is from GitHub. If you go to GitHub, you need to make sure you click on the green code button and then download the zip file. Now before installing your controls, as you can see on the prerequisites page of your controls, you will need Visual Studio redistributable. Now the chances are you may already have this, but if you don't or you get any errors with the install, just make sure you click this link on the site, it takes you direct to Microsoft and then you can go through the installation uh, following the instructions. Now I'm using the automated installer for your controls and downloading this will provide you with the following zip folder, which we're going to extract into a new folder just on the desktop in my case. Now because the application has no verified publisher, you may see Windows Smart Screen show the following warning. Now I've seen absolutely no evidence to suggest that your controls is a malicious piece of software. It's used across the board in the Flight Sim community and there hasn't been any reports on it doing anything that it shouldn't be doing. I've also scanned this with my own antivirus software, Malwarebytes and Windows Defender. I even went as far as uploading it to Virus Total, where sadly one vendor did identify it as a download manager but I do think that this is a false positive given all the evidence that your controls has got going for it so do feel free to scan it with your own antivirus before you go ahead and install the software so back at smart screen then if you click on more info on the setup file then you can click run anyway and allow the software to open up tick the box to create the desktop shortcut and then hit install and wait for your controls installer to do its magic now before we jump into your controls and the configuration of it there's a few things just to check out in the simulator itself so let's head over there now so there's four main points here then in the simulator. We've got our crash physics and a few of the other settings as well, such as the AI pilot options. We've got interacting with aircraft avionics and flight management computers. And then we've got loading flight plans from things like Simbrief and ensuring the aircraft have got a persistent state across the board. Let's start with the, some of the crash settings and AI effects of the flight simulator. So arguably the most important option to switch off in the flight simulator is the failure and damage options within assistance options. Now the reason being for this mainly is because what your controls is actually doing is syncing two different simulators up including the aircraft's position. If one of you has a small drop out in connection or there's a small syncing issue and the other aircraft moved quite quickly to the other aircraft's position flight simulator may recognize that as an overstress scenario and it will kick someone out of the aircraft and their flight. What I would also recommend doing is you work with the other person and you go through the assistance options to make sure that, you're, that yours actually match with the other person's. The main one is the actual stress damage to be switched off, but I'd recommend it switching things off like crash damage as well. Everything else is up to you guys, for example, the pilot and navigation aids, but you're gonna get a much better experience if these settings are synced between each simulator. Now let's talk about interacting with the avionics and flight management computers of the supported aircraft from your controls. Now, what your controls is doing is it's syncing key presses between the aircraft. It doesn't know the data that actually sits within the flight management or avionics systems. 
For that reason, only one person should be interacting with that given area. So for example, one person may be going through checklists on the aircraft, switching things on, while the other person imports or fills out the flight plan. Now in more advanced aircraft, such as the fly-by-wire A320 or the PMDG 737, there is some more tips to look out for which we will cover off on a later video. In this video, we're gonna focus on the default Airbus A320. Final option there, which we've missed out for the time being, is the persistent load state of the aircraft. We're gonna talk about that a little bit more when we actually get onto the playthrough part of this video. Before then though, uh, that's everything that needs to be done in the simulator as far as the settings of the sim go, the generalized settings, so the non-flight specific ones. We're gonna jump back to your controls now, but before we do, I just wanted to show on screen the different types of connections that you're able to do between both hosts. The first one being cloud peer-to-peer, -peer, which is what we have always used, and it will utilize a rendezvous server in order to connect two computers behind a router. Now, this is what we've used for the whole time. The other options are cloud hosts, where the cloud host utilizes a hosted server that will relay the traffic. And then there's also the direct, which actually requires port forwarding to be enabled, or that both of you are on the same network, which I'm guessing for the majority of you, you won't be. So we would recommend leaving it as the default cloud peer-to-peer -peer for this option. Now, within your controls itself, you need to make sure that in the settings you have selected the correct aircraft. If you haven't done this, you will experience issues because the key presses between the aircraft cannot sync. So it must be set as the aircraft you both intend to fly. If the aircraft is not on this list, it is worth checking the website as there is a couple of exceptions. For example, Captain Sims 777 actually uses the Azobo 7478i system. So you might be able to get away with some unsupported aircraft. Now the connection timeout we set as 10 however if you do experience packet loss between your controls you can up this limit. The username is up to yourselves as is the theme, streamer mode and observer mode. Once you're happy save the settings. Okay so let's talk about flight plans in the simulator then. You obviously will both need the exact same flight plan and if you choose to you can just generate one from the sim. I would recommend using something like SimBrief though and then importing the file by pressing the space bar twice in the simulator. Now the most important thing no matter how you choose to import the flight plan whether it's using the default sim or using something like SimBrief you must be on the same AirRack database in the simulator. Now, we both use Navigraph. We both have a Navigraph subscription and we have the software which installs and updates the simulator to the latest air rack. If you don't use Navigraph and you don't plan to use Simbri for the importation of flight plans, all you really need to do when you create the flight plan is verify that you both have the same waypoints. If you don't, that will cause issues with autopilots following the nav. The other thing to look out for is ensuring the same standard instrument departure and standard arrival procedure have been set in the simulator. You don't want to be using different ones. The planes need to be synced up with their navig navigation data. So make sure the exact same ones have been selected. And whilst you're getting to know the software, just confirm with one another via whatever voice chat you're using that everything does line up and is the same as far as the navigation data actually goes. You will have also noticed in that video that I also selected a gate which I've started from as well. Now make sure the other party also does that and it's also quite important to make sure you do that if you're going to be going on something like VATSIM. Now this does mean the aircraft will be in a cold and dark state but we'll get onto that when we cover off the persistent state of aircraft in this video. One more things to consider. First of all, the aircraft's weight and balance needs to be exactly the same. If one person's got more fuel than the other or more payload than the other, you can imagine what issues that's going to cause. I'd also recommend just switching off unlimited fuel because the way the simulator fuels aircraft back up could cause issues, especially if one person's got it switched on and the other person's got it switched off. It's the same for things like customization options like wear and tear. It's just creating more things for your controls to manage. So you need to make sure you've cross-checked these things correctly, especially in default aircraft. So following the same principle, Things such as weather do need to be synced up. If both simulators have got different weather on them, then the aircraft's gonna fly differently and it's more things to try and sync up. You're gonna see some funky behavior if different weather has been set. 
I'd also recommend doing the same time because the lights in the cockpit do sync together so depending on what lights you want switched on it's probably better to have the exact same time set. Now things like multiplayer and air traffic, I've always got air traffic switched off because your controls isn't able to sync air traffic. As for multiplayer, I haven't actually tested that before, I've only been on VATSIM but because of VATSIM we've had multiplayer switched off from the get go so if you're going to do a live flight such as this I would likely just turn off the group flight feature. So now we can go into your controls and hit start server. I do this before I've started the flight and then you're provided with a session code which you can hand in to your friend. Now before your friend loads in you need to click on the fly button first and wait for the simulator to load in. Your friend can connect to the server with your controls but not start the flight yet. This is the best way we've seen this to work so far. Now once you're in the simulator, the best way to go if you're at the gate is by switching on the external power. So only one of you needs to do this and this will verify if the sims have synced up correctly. Now if you remember at the start of the video we discussed the persistent panel state across the aircraft and this is exactly what we need to verify at this stage, that the aircraft are both in the same state. If things get too out of sync that's when you may see a connection drop out or some funky behaviour in the simulator. Now it can happen during flight, I've seen it before happen but usually with default aircraft it's quite rare as long as you've made sure everything matches up as shown in this video mainly the nav data and that's usually the biggest one then you should be good to go and actually take the aircraft up into the air. Now a slight drawback to your controls is sadly the person connecting won't have the ability to manipulate the flight control services without being given control through the application. So you'll have to fire the application up, it'll still be open obviously on your taskbar and select give control. Now once you do that the host has got the ability to take back control or the other client is able to just pass the controls back. The only thing that you can't do is if you've connected to your friend's device and they haven't given you control, you can't take control off them. They have to actually grant you it first. They're joining as an observer. Now, we've done this during default aircraft. We're able to pass control to one another and it works fine. In some of the other aircraft, such as payware models, we have experienced some issues with that, but we'll cover that in some more detail on a later video. To conclude then, your controls is a fantastic bit of kit and really enhances flying in the flight simulator. Flying with another person really takes off some of the workload and stress with some of the more advanced aircraft systems we see nowadays in flight simulator. As mentioned before, we are going to do another video where we showcase taking your controls onto VATSIM and some things to look out for and then flying with your controls with some other aircraft such as the PMDG 737 and potentially the fly-by-wire A320 although there's still a few things that were working out using your controls with that particular aircraft. If you did like this long form video and the tutorial did help you as I said earlier please be sure to hit subscribe, like the video and uh, await the next one. Thanks all very much for watching.